My name is Joshua Harp. I work at the TD Synex Cyber Range, and my background is predominantly in offensive security. So what we'll be demonstrating is some offensive security tradecraft and how uh, the WatchGuard EPDR solution can help mitigate um, some of those uh, tactics, te techniques, and procedures. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right in and demonstrate today the Zero Trust Application Service, the Threat Hunting Service, the HIPS capability, the Host Intrusion Prevention System capability, and then as well the Anti-Exploit feature. Uh, first off, I just want to quickly review that our agent itself is running in lock mode. What this lock mode does is it means the malicious content is removed, the indicators of attack or IOAs are detected, and then any unknown binaries are not allowed to execute until they've been classified by WatchGuard. This helps to enable that zero uh, trust posture that's been talked about today. So to start off, one of the first things that I'm going to demonstrate is how WatchGuard uh, through their zero trust application service can one, uh, quarantine those unknown binaries until they've been classified. So what I'm going to do here on my host is I'm going to simulate uh, through PowerShell a user or a bad actor uh, download, that has downloaded um, binaries that potentially are malicious or not um, malicious at all but they need to be uh, classified. So I've gone ahead here and already downloaded them, so we don't have to go through the whole uh, pulling up a browser and then downloading them. And I'm gonna go ahead and just execute one of these. And as you can see, this is an untrusted program uh, that has been attempted to run on the computer and that uh, WatchGuard now is going to work through the classification process on the back end before this binary is permitted uh, to run on the host. This helps to ensure that there are no malicious attributes of this binary. I'll go ahead and uh, just show you again, executing a, a new binary here. You can see they're new with the randomly generated strings. And just uh, third time, just to reinforce the point, you see the Pro, the program is not trusted and therefore it's been blocked uh, by WatchGuard. If we go into our WatchGuard uh, dashboard for the EPDR agent, we can see here uh, that those programs um, are currently blocked and are waiting to be classified. Earlier in my testing, you can see we ran a uh, ransom simulator, but then here are those other um, those other binary, random binaries that we've executed. And you can see here the likelihood of them being malicious. Um, however, with our protection mode being locked, uh, those binaries are not uh, permitted uh, to execute. So we'll go ahead and move on uh, to the second demonstration here. And for that demonstration, what we're going to be showing is the downloading of known malware to the workstation. So this um, PowerShell one-liner goes ahead and calls out to a locally running uh, web server, uh, grabs that executable, and then puts it in the document settings folder. Shortly here enough, you'll see the watch guard pops up and says that a threat has been deleted from the system. In the event you didn't get that the first time, we'll go ahead and run it again with a different malware variant. And then I'll talk about these malware variants as this second one is executing. Uh, two of these binaries, the top two, are emulating um, or are samples of uh, CryptBot. This is an info, uh, information stealing um, Trojan that is being distributed through cracked software downloads. Um, given the COVID-19 pandemic and work from home being on the rise, um, groups like WatchGuard have seen uh, attacks using CryptBot on, on, on the rise. Um, and then these last two here are demonstrating uh, Agent Tesla. These executables are Agent Tesla uh, variants. Agent Tesla is a malware as a service rat, a remote access Trojan that works to steal keystrokes and credentials um, that are in a um, user's system. 
There have been multiple iterations of Agent Tesla. The actors are constantly developing out their tradecraft and changing um, the way in which it is run. And the most recent version of Tesla uh, has begun to target Bitcoin users and, and their wallets. Now, I realize not everyone out there uh, might use Bitcoin or have a cryptocurrency wallet, but the reality is we all have bank accounts where our salaries go in. And more often than not, we do log into our workstations and, and check uh, our current balance or see if a payment has been processed. So Agent Tesla is definitely capable of um, capturing those uh, banking credentials as well, or any credentials for that matter, um, that you use to log in, in into the um, system. So if I go back into uh, the WatchGuard EPDR dashboard here, we see that there is a malware tab. And through my testing, I ran a whole bunch of different malware. Um, but you can see here the malware that we just executed um, seconds, uh, minutes ago, and how the action that has been taken is that it's getting quarantined and not being permitted to uh, run on the system. And now some of you in, in the crowd might be saying, well, that's, that's great and all. Uh, malware is signature-based. Uh, what about uh, malware list-based attacks? Uh, like uh, Rui was explaining. Well, we can jump into um, demonstrating some exploitation uh, that runs in memory. Uh, for this, I'll be using um, the Atomic Red uh, Team script uh, based in PowerShell. The reason that I'm going to do this is because Atomic Red Team fortunately provides me with a library of simple and focused tests that are my, mapped directly to MITRE, um, MITRE's attack matrix, matrix. If you're not familiar with MITRE's attack matrix for the enterprise, it is a uh, catalog, if you will, of all the tools, techniques, and procedures that are being run by different advanced persistent threat groups like APT28, APT18, APT1. Now, the reality is, is not every organization is going to come up against an APT, um, and some organizations are actually going to get uh, attacked by um, uh, kids with scripts or, or skiddies. And most often than not, what we are seeing, though, with skidware is that they are also looking at the tradecraft that is being used by advanced persistent threats because of its effectiveness and also launching it uh, in their own um, campaigns. Now, there are reconnaissance phases, there's a resource uh, development phase, there's initial access, access execution, persistence. Um, the effectiveness and their way in which they get caught sometimes is because uh, they don't change um, either the signatures or the attributes of what's being uh, executed, and endpoint protection solution more often than not can pick up on that. So for this first one, though, we're going to execute technique 1003. This is going to run in memory here. And technique 1003 is a Lassus memory dump. And so what this is demonstrating is how um, credentialed memory, that is uh, credentials that are stored in memory, are now being captured via proc dump or Mimikatz. Obviously, the execution is in PowerShell. And right here, we see this exploitation has been removed. If I go ahead and I go into the dashboard and I go to my exploit activity incidents, we see this dump from Lassus where there was an attempt to capture my Windows-based credentials. This could be local Windows credentials. This could be Active Directory-based credentials. If your domain administrators are logging into local workstations to troubleshoot issues, that could be domain administrative level credentials. And so fortunately, because we have the uh, WatchGuard EPDR agent deployed here, this exploitation attack is stopped in its tracks. Now, I'm going to go ahead and display another type of attack, and this is more directly tied to uh, certain types of post-exploitation measures. If we go into the exploit activity here, or our IOAs, let me show you our indicators of attack.
So this was the Lassus credential dump, and now we have the execution with PowerShell. And we see there's an in-memory in, in execution um, script with PowerShell. And what this is doing is this is using those living off the land um, techniques that were explained to you earlier by Rui. And I just want to go a bit more in depth with that. So what is living off the land? Well, living off the land in the traditional sense means to survive only on the resources that you can harvest uh, from the natural land. So living off the land in the context of um, of, of, of operating systems relates to the use of tools that are traditionally deployed on a Windows system. And what this allows uh, for actors to do sometimes is avoid detection and fly under the radar. Um, but as we see here, the inders, indicators of attack are known. They're being processed by the WatchGuard EPDR um, solution, but as well, if we go into our incidents here, that's the last one. Let's open this one. Oh, this is the exploit the other day. Here's our run DLL 32. We can see that the process was ended. And if we go into our activity here, we can see how the execution of this additional post-exploitation measure um, was, was done. And so with, with that, right, all together, what we have demonstrated for you today is we have demonstrated not only the unknown binaries that are getting blocked and classified by WatchGuard EPDR, um, but we've also demonstrated malware-based activities, so malware that will be downloaded through files. And then ultimately, we've shown post-exploitation and exploitation techniques that can run in memory on a system.